So this was key in our minds when developing Saliva Direct. We wanted to drive down prices as much as possible. So the first thing that we did is that we showed that SARS-CoV-2 RNA is very stable in saliva, that you don't need to have expensive sort of buffers that are marketed to, to stabilize that virus RNA to make it, um, to make sure that you'll be able to detect it after it's been sitting out for various times and temperatures. So we showed that, first of all, that you don't need those expensive buffers, which means that you don't need um, specialized collection devices. You can just use very generic laboratory plastic tubes, which are in the range of, you know, cents to dollars rather than being much more. Um, the next step of the process was to um, make the test itself cheaper. We identified early on that the most costly part of the whole PCR test is the RNA extraction step. It's longer, it requires more hands-on time from staff, and it requires, as I said, an array of different chemicals and reagents, and those can be incredibly costly. So what we wanted to see was, is RNA extraction even needed? So it was actually um, one evening I was setting up a PCR. We were doing our normal PCR testing, and I had some saliva samples from different COVID-19 inpatients sitting there. And I just thought I'd see what would happen if we put saliva straight into the PCR test itself that's you know run at the back end after extraction usually and we put those through the PCR and um, not all results were perfect by any means um, some outright failed but some were perfect and we got some like near identical results to as what we'd get if we did the full RNA extraction and the fact that we even had some promising results while some very much failed it was enough to you know um, give us the confidence that we should look into this further to see if we could fully remove that and how we can make every saliva sample being put into PCR um, run successfully.